introduce uh, Colonel Wes Martin. He is a former anti-terrorism force protection officer of all coalition forces in Iraq and base commander for Camp Ashraf. Wes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. By, by special request, I had asked that General Dave Phillips go first and I follow because I knew everything he said I would agree with and I do. I had the same experiences and until a month ago Dave and I didn't know each other. We knew of each other and we respected each other's reputation but we came up independently with the same conclusions and we had the same experiences. So where is the common denominator? The common denominator is in truth. That is why Dave and I are here now because of our bond with our allies and our friends and our brothers and sisters at Ashraf and because we see truth being violated for the sake of appeasing the Iranian government. The Thank you. Bye. The State Department claims the PMOI is a terrorist organization. As I've mentioned, we know better. From the very beginning at Camp Ashraf, surrendering the weapons, consolidating at Ashraf. And when I look at those 2009-2011 videos, I see people being gunned down and other Ashraf residents running to the rescue. When State Department bureaucrats could not figure out what to do, the 2003 ceasefire agreement was thrown out, protected person status revoked, and the PMOI turned over to a pro-Iranian Maliki government. When I returned to the United States from working in Ashraf, I was already disgusted with the State Department because of the one representative they had over there. Her behavior was nothing short of despicable. Spreading rumors, which like Dave before me, I ended up having to go and bust up. And it was a never-ending story, and not one of them was validated. She was providing sensitive information about the Ashraf residents to National Security Advisor Rubier, and we all know he is an Iranian agent, and that's no secret in Iraq either. Totally offensive when she came to the camp, but I returned to the United States, and I started trying to work with the State Department, and I sat down with their representatives who had the portfolios and found out I had to go to Ashraf 101. I had to show them my pictures, show them how the camp was set up, show them the clothes and uniform. And these are the subject matter experts, and they didn't have a clue. I even provided a copy of Foreign Minister Zabiri's letter confirming the PMOI never attacked Kurdistan. That letter was validated. It was sent to Iraq, and the Baghdad office went to Foreign Minister Zabiri, and he said, yes, I did write it, and yes, it's true. Six months later, the list came out saying... Once again, PMOI is on it, and once again, they attack the Kurds. And I went back to my contacts, and I said, what are you talking about? We straightened that out. And their, con uh, contact, uh, uh, their comment was, well, we don't talk to the people who put out that list. What are you talking about? They're only over in that building there. We're all in Foggy Bottom. Well, we just don't do that. It was passing on rumors and never stra trying to straighten out the lies. Then they stopped answering my phones. One thing I would like to point out. When the U.S. Court of Appeals made its decision in summer, early summer of 2010, that this has to be resolved and six months was given to do it. The amount of time it has taken the State Department not to do it is the same amount of time the United States spent in World War I. It is interesting that with all the technology that we have today, a hundred years later, one decision can't be made in the same amount of time our nation was engaged in the war. I can understand why the war on terrorism has taken so long when Beltway bureaucrats can't make one decision. Ambassador Kobler, I don't know where you got your facts on Camp Liberty, but I'll tell you what, you didn't put your dress shoes on the ground to go out and find out what was going on. And also, Ambassador Jeffries, I don't know where you were think, or what you were thinking when you told Senator McCain and Senator Levin that Camp Ashraf security will be performed by Maliki and two months later we had the 2011 attack. 
To Hillary Clinton, I state the following. The situation in Ashraf and Liberty should not be about politics. It should be about humanity. It should not be about appeasing the fundamentalist extreme Iranian government. It should be about the United States honoring ceasefire and surrender of arms agreements. It should not be about your bureaucrats doing as they please while ignoring experienced people. It should about be complying with the laws passed by Congress and the mandates established by the courts. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you.